Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So it's finally time guys, it's finally time that I jump in with both feet and make the switch to Linux. Now there's a few reasons for this, I'm going to go over a few articles and a few news stories you may not have heard about uh, that has really put a end of life for me personally on using Windows. Windows 11, they're doing some things that I don't like. I didn't like a lot of things done with Windows 10, but I bit the bullet and said, all right, I'll just put up with that. Um, but they're gonna be doing some things in the not too distant future I'm just not gonna get on board with. So Windows 11 is a non-starter for me. Windows 10 will last for quite a while, of course, but you know, if I want updates and newer features and things like that, well, Windows is just not going to be able to provide that for me. So I've been tinkering a lot with Linux. I mentioned it a lot on the Techonomics podcast. If you aren't subscribed, links down below. Paul and I chat every week about this kind of stuff. And I've actually had a really wonderful experience over the past few days. I've been testing out a bunch of different games, a bunch of programs that I like to use, and it works so well. So I'm going to personally transition from Windows being my primary operating system to becoming a secondary operating system. And I recommend for a lot of you guys that might be a good way to go. So I'm gonna let you guys know what's bugging me, the pros and cons to moving over to Linux, the fact that you just can't make the jump in one big step, and let you know my process and my thought process on how I'm going to do this and make it all work. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today, how to get into Linux gaming for realsies. All right, so starting off with the news that's come out here recently that just is a giant red flag for me. First, I saw this, Windows 11 Pro will soon require a Microsoft account. So this is going to happen. We all thought it was gonna happen with Windows 11, didn't initially, but now seems like they're gonna force it. You'll also need an internet connection during setup. So that was the way you could get around this, was just unplug your ethernet cable or don't connect Wi-Fi, and you could just set up a local account. That's fine, you do the same thing with Windows 10, but they're going to be removing this as an option. And you guys know me, I don't like less options, I like more. Microsoft says it's planning to update Windows 11 Pro so it will require an internet connection and a Microsoft account during the initial setup phase. This was actually one of the major benefits to having the Pro license versus a home license uh, is the fact that you could get around this. And honestly, for a lot of businesses, I don't know if this is really gonna work out or they're gonna force people into an enterprise edition. Perhaps that will be a little workaround for people, but eventually it looks like they're gonna get rid of it entirely. The changes will mirror the same requirements Microsoft originally added to Windows 11 Home last year. So basically they're making Pro and Home very, very similar in this regard, meaning you won't be able to avoid Microsoft accounts by creating a local user account. So yeah, it's coming. Microsoft is telling you that this is going to be a thing. And personally, I don't want to log into a Microsoft account just to use my PC. And if that wasn't bad enough, also from The Verge here, we have Microsoft says the Windows 11 File Explorer ads were not intended to be published externally. So basically what happened was during File Explorer on your PC, so if you're just browsing C Drive for whatever, there was ads accidentally updated into the File Explorer. Now, a lot of people will go, well, you know, this wasn't intended, this isn't a real thing, but this means that Microsoft is exploring this. So just as an example, I'm on Windows 10, I just opened up File Explorer here. Imagine just having ads pop up while I'm browsing and doing my thing. Personally, I don't like that, and it's very clear that Microsoft is looking to do this. Otherwise, there's no possible way that this would have been a thing. So they're looking to make your PC a giant spam machine. And while that might not be the case now, it will eventually be a thing as it's already happened by accident. So to me, it's pretty clear what direction Microsoft's trying to go with Windows. They're trying to make what used to be a mostly open system into a much more walled garden. They want to start pitching ads, they want to start locking you in, they want to start being able to track your stuff. That started with Windows 10. And honestly, no, no thank you, I don't need that in my life. Thankfully, Steam and Valve, those guys have really been pushing the envelope when it comes to Linux gaming. And gaming is the one thing that's been holding me to Windows. And with the fact that gaming over on Linux is getting really, really good to the point where some people are having better gaming experiences on Linux versus Windows, I'm like, all right, it's time for me to double check this. And 
yeah, you can have a great experience over there if you're willing to make a few compromises. And honestly, I can see the future as to what they're going to do to mitigate all these problems. And eventually, I think Linux gaming will actually be far superior to Windows because you don't have all this other bloat and crap going on. Now, since for me, gaming is good enough on Linux, the big hang up is going to be uh, I use PowerDirector for my video editing and I use Photoshop for my thumbnails and things like that. So I can't just completely jump straight over to Linux because there are alternate programs over there. I'm just not familiar with them. So what I'm going to personally do is I'm going to have two SSDs, one with Windows 10, which is going to be my work SSD, basically, where I'll just have the two programs that I need, my PowerDirector and Adobe Photoshop. And then pretty much I'm just going to do everything else on Linux, as I already personally prefer browsing and just general stuff, you know, going on the internet, chatting on Discord, those sort of things. I've already found that experience to be far superior to Windows, mostly due to the fact that Linux, at least the distribution I use, which is Pop OS, you can use whatever you want. That's the great part about Linux. You can find what works best for you. Uh, it's just a much smoother and cleaner experience. Uh, the CPU scheduler is significantly better. I've noticed that in gaming where the CPU scheduler is just on point. You don't see your uh, CPU usage jump around too much. Usually it pegs one or two cores with the hard stuff and then all the other cores are split nice and even. And even in games that split their workload, it's split far more even. So basically the hardware scheduler for CPU is so much better over there that you do get extra performance. Now here are the caveats. A lot of you guys will be going, well, Linux gaming has some downsides. They do. Number one, not every game works, but as you guys have noticed, especially with Valve and Steam really pushing this, every game will eventually work. So if there's one or two games that you're like, I wanna play those, but I don't play them regularly, eventually they will work. It's just gonna take a little bit of time if they're bigger titles. If they're smaller titles or older titles, if you have trouble getting them work, there's usually a workaround for that. But realistically, there's a lot of older games that are very difficult to get running on Windows 10, Windows 11 anyway. So if you're willing to tweak on Windows, basically you just have to tweak differently on Linux to get those to work. But all major titles should work eventually on Linux. So if they're not there yet, they will soon. As long as it's not a make or break title for you, I would recommend giving it a shot. Now, the other big issue with gaming on Linux, I mentioned it in my last video, a lot of people didn't like that, but the shader caching issue, because you're going from DirectX to Vulkan and a lot of these titles, there is that micro stutter. Basically, it's like using uh, RPCS3 for the first time, there are shader caching going on. Now, Chris Titus Tech, he's a great uh, YouTuber, I love his videos. He actually did a video here recently for, what was it, Apex Legends, where the community is now coming up with their own shader caches. So they're taking shader caches from a bunch of different people, combining them, and then you just drop them in. This is going to be the workaround that solves this issue forever. Now it's not implemented super easy right now and it's not for all games, but this is the path moving forward and I guarantee you Valve will introduce this. And I bet you even the Lutris team for all non-Steam games will do this as well. So eventually what'll happen is you'll just download a pre-rendered cache file from somewhere, from the internet, from Steam, whatever. And then that's gonna mitigate that issue in the not too distant future. So that is the way moving forward and that will eliminate that. However, for games that that's not the case, you don't have that option right now, you'll have to deal with a little bit of judder. So you will have to make a small sacrifice. You know, your game's not gonna run super smooth from step one, but 10, 15 minutes of play time after you deal with it, then the game's probably gonna be just fine. Usually it didn't even take that long. It was basically like five minutes into the game and everything pretty much smoothed out because all those shaders were cached. Now, the next time you go back to play the game, it doesn't have to do it all over again. So then you get that smooth experience. It's just like using, like I said, RPCS3 or CMU for the first time. If you've ever used those, it's a similar experience to that. In the future, the way forward is just community driven uh, shader cache packs that will be downloaded. And like I said, this is a known quantity. This is already happening with Apex Legends. I'll put Chris Titus's video down below. You can watch it. Um, so this way, if you do play Apex Legends, that's already a thing now. You just have to rename and drag and drop a file and everything runs smooth. So to me, that's just not gonna be an issue in the future. Even though it is kind of a concern right now, 
it re I could deal with it personally. To get away from Windows, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. That's something you have to ask yourself if you're willing to deal with a little bit of judder here and there to get away from Windows. For me, it is. For you, it may not. And then, like I said, in the future, that's not going to be a problem anyway, as the solution has already been found. Now, here's the big one, the one that everybody's going to be like, well, my software productivity software doesn't work on Linux. I'm right there with you. So this is the other big hurdle, and this is the reason why for most of us, we're going to still need a Windows installation on our systems. You could either use a virtual machine. For me, it's just easier to have two SSDs and you just you know, pick whichever one I want to boot into. Uh, you could even dual boot off of one, but I wipe out my SSDs pretty frequently to keep everything clean, at least on Windows. So yeah, it's just easier for me to do it this way. Regardless, I'm going to use Linux as my main setup. So for like this, I'm gonna start recording my videos using OBS on Linux. Uh, I'll do the podcast with Paul. That'll be using Discord and OBS. Once again, that'll all be on Linux. And then the only thing I'm going to use Windows for is the things that I absolutely need Windows for. The one or two games that I can't get running on Linux right now, I'll still have Windows for that. Um, and then, you know, for my productivity software. And that's it. So my main boot is going to be Linux. I'm going to do most of my workload over there. And then I'm going to start working with the programs on Linux, the video editing softwares that they have, get more familiar with it, more comfortable with it. And then once I feel like I have my workflow switched where I can use those other programs, that's when I'm going to eliminate Windows entirely. And yeah, I'm very excited for this. Uh, like I said, I've been spending probably the last week on the machine right here. I've been testing out different games, different configurations, different programs. And the experience is really, really good nowadays, especially compared to even where it was a few months ago. Um, the biggest thing, like I said, is the micro stuttering. That is a little bit annoying, but if you have a powerful-ish CPU, uh, so right there I have the Core i7 Extreme Edition 5960X, which I will be doing a video on. So not the newest and fastest CPU, but it's an eight core 16 thread CPU that is able to power through. But I was actually using a Phenom 2 X4 uh, before I got that in and, and tested Linux on there and it was still okay. It, you know, and that's like an ancient system. So the micro stuttering is obviously way lower on there because it has much more CPU grunt. Uh, so depending on how powerful your CPU is, you know, the less impactful that will be. Now, of course, it's Linux. Things are going to be run a little bit different. In the next video in this series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Linux on this system that I'm using right now. And I'm going to show you step by step everything that I do, the programs that I install, what I set up, how I monitor things, how I test things out on Linux. And yeah, this way you guys can see exactly how I configure it. I can go ahead and get performance monitoring on most of the games out there. And this way I can compare apples to apples. And that's what I'm going to start doing here in the not too distant future. I'm going to compare Linux gaming to Windows gaming and see how much closer they're getting. And if in some cases, Linux might actually be superior. So yeah, a lot of people don't think that that's a thing, but the hardware scheduler, the CPU scheduler is so much better that you're freeing up a lot of CPU resources. You're freeing up a lot of RAM because you don't have that bloat of Windows on there. And honestly, it's just something that I never thought I would be saying. Linux might actually be a superior experience for some people. So once again, go check out Chris Titus's uh, Chris Titus Tech, his channel, I got a couple of his videos down below because he'll actually go over and explain how he was able to get better performance out of Linux compared to Windows on a few titles. I know he's exploring this because these same topics bother him coming up with Windows. Uh, obviously, I'm cool with Windows 10 the way it is. I disable updates. I don't get have any of that stuff going on, so it's fine now. But eventually, the feature set, security stuff is just going to get out of date, you know, three, four, five years from now. And I'm just not going to be okay with moving to 11. So I have to find an alternate option. If you're in the same boat, I hope this video kind of got you a little motivated to start looking at Linux as a real option. And then in the future videos, I'll help you out. I'll show you what I'm doing. And, you know, we can figure it out together. Maybe I'll run into some issues. Some of you guys that are more knowledgeable than me can help out. And then we help the community. And everybody gets the experience that they want. So if you're fine using Windows, that's, that's you. I mean, whatever. It's technically easier, but think of it this way, you may actually be leaving performance on the table. It's ridiculous. Never thought I would say that, but 
yes, that is a real thing uh, in certain games under certain circumstances. So that's what we're going to be testing out moving forward. I'm super excited about this. This is something I'm more pas passionate about. Uh, PC hardware to me just isn't that much fun anymore. It's just getting way too expensive. However, maximizing your performance with free software is... Hey, to me, that's just a cool way to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. If you want to chat about this type of stuff, make sure you click the uh, Technomics podcast. Subscribe over there. Hit the notification bell. We go live twice a week. I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys about that. And if you want to join, you can click the little join button down below or become a Patreon member. Join the Discord and you can help me. I can help you. Just a big community thing. Be more than happy to chat with you about this stuff whenever you want. So, alrighty, guys, that's really all I have for you here today. I'm super excited. I'll be working on these videos. I'll get the uh, X99 platform video going here soon. I'm waiting on a few parts to come in. But, yeah, that was surprisingly good considering that processor less than $100. So there's a little uh, secret there. If you're looking for something that's really fast and doesn't cost a whole lot of money, you just got to get a deal on the motherboard. That's the trick. But you can do it. I did. Uh, it only took me like two hours. I got a good deal. So it's possible. Anyways, guys, I can ramble on forever because this, I'm very, very excited about this. Maximizing value, getting extra performance, and just having a better experience. And I'm going to go on that journey with you. Hope you want to join. All righty, guys, that's it. That's my last one there. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.